Hello everyone, Sunderak here. This video is a little different. This is not going to be a guide video. Instead, this is going to be a lore slash history video on the history of Rex Lapis slash Morax slash John Lee, and also to an extend the whole history of Liwe. Um, this will be my first lore video. I've only included the historical part in this from all the texts that are currently in Genshin Impact. Also, if you like the content, please make, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you and enjoy the story. The story of Li Yue, or in this case Li Yue, started 3,700 years ago. Morax descended on the land that was now known as Li Yue. The land was filled with tsunamis and droughts. The lives for the fo common folks were rather difficult at the time. Morax moved mountains and filled seas to block the waves. As a result, Mount Tianhong still stands to guard Li Yue to this day. The arrival of a divine being gave the people hope, and soon they became the followers of Morax. Morax then visited all the Adapti in Liyue, signed contract with them all, and founded the nation of Liyue. Most Liyue folks are miners at that time, but luckily there were plenty of mining supplies, so Liyue soon became a prosperous nation. However, there are still more threats coming from the sea. The ocean gave birth to a monster named Ba Qiu who was undefeated at sea. Sometimes the monster travels from the abyss below to the shallow waters, rising tides to causing damages to shipwrecks and damages to houses. Rex Lapis crafted a large bird out of jade and stone. Once the bird was made, it was able to escape the earth, gravity in this case, and reach the clouds. Then it dived straight ahead, like a spear, into the center of the abyss where the monster was fighting the stone whale made by Rex Lapis. The monster was nailed onto the dark ocean floor, unable to move again, and thus Rex Lapis saved the people of Liyue from the sea monster. After that, there was some time of peace until the appearance of a young woman. One day Rex Lapis was searching through the land of Liyue to find the next location suitable for more settlement, when a young woman appeared before him, giving him a stone lock, saying it was both a symbol, a pledge, and a challenge. Rex Lapis was confused by the young woman at first, however as the god of contract, this type of pledge without any actual contract did not took his interest. But what happened after always brings him back to the memory of that day, remembering the sea of wild glaze lilies. Gui Zhang, who's the name of the young woman, quickly became friends with the Adapti and Rex Lapis. She loves to tinker with mechanisms, and she invented the Gui Zhang Ballista with the help of the Cloud Retainer. She constructed the Ballista to defend Mount Tianhong. She also led the people of Liyue to settle north of the mountain. The land was fertile there, so the people of Liyue started to transition into farming. Prosperity was brought about. Guizhan then suggested to Rex Lapis, now the people of Liyue all have stable jobs and a stable settlement. It is almost like they're back home from wherever they came from, so they should name the place Guili Plains, meaning coming back to Liyue. Rex Lapis agreed with the idea. Not long after the Archon War broke out, the entire Tevat was under the flames of the Archon War. Guili Plains became one of the center of conflict. While outnumbered, the Adapti fought with the Archon, even though the Adapti won the war in the end. But casualties were brought about. Guizhang was one of them that fell. In the same plain where the wild glazed lilies plume, Guizhang and Rex Lapis stood there. Beans are so insignificant like dust, no one ever knows what when they would depart from this chaotic world. This thought would bring about fear, but because of this fear, the effort was doubled. This was what this was Guizhang's wisdom. Her power is insignificant compared to that of Rex Lapis, which is why she focused on mechanisms and alliances. Her alliance with Rex Lapis was meant to bring more prosperity to the land of Liwe. However, with a smile, Guizhan turns to dust in front of the eyes of Rex Lapis, leaving behind her dreams, the stone lock, and the memory of dust. The eons after, Rex Lapis never forgot about that lock, nor the wild glaze lily, which became very rare because most were destroyed in the Archon War. For a conflict like the Archon War, the common folks are always the first to suffer. Rex Lapis is their hope. 
the separation from children and loved ones together with the fear of the unknown and the fear for other archons would turn the most loyal followers of the Geo Archon into ones that question his ability to protect the people of Liwa. Thus, Rex Lapis carved a sword out of pure gold Rekor Lapis, and with a single slice shaped off the top of a mountain, forming a contract. Those who lost will eventually reunite. Those who break contracts will suffer the wrath of the rock. Those who lost their loved ones, those who lost their precious possessions, and those who were faced with injustice will be compensated. For the rest of the Archon War, Rex Lapis traveled everywhere, but the only thing that he remembers is the lives that are suffering as a result of this war. Even a place as grand as Liyue has no place of peace. Rex Lapis realized the cruelty of the world and he wants to protect his people. Thus, he forged a mask out of basalt to cover his face and started slaughtering Archons. Those who fell under his spear cannot be counted, earning him the title of the God of War. One example is the Overlord of the Vortex Osile. Legend says that there is a giant shadow under the abyss of the ocean. Using Vortex and Tsunami, this creature breaks ships and sucks off its prey into the abyss of the ocean. At the location now known as the Guiyun Stone Forest, Rex Lapis rained down countless spears made out of stone, cleared the threat of multiple Archons including Osile. In the process, he saved a Yaksha. The Yaksha was enslaved by the other Archons and forced to become their weapon, slaughtering the innocents and devouring their dreams. Rex Lapis faced the former master of the Yaksha. The results of the battle were clearly written in the history of today, and Rex Lapis gave the Yaksha the name Shao. Throughout the time that is too long to even imagine for a human, Rex Lapis slaughtered many enemies including some of his former friends. However, this cannot be stopped because there can only be one Archon left in Liyue, or because there will never be a second Guizhong. When the cup that is supposed to fill wine is instead filled with blood, when reasons and love are torn apart by greed into dust, the gifts that were never given out, the friendship that were never extended, will become a sharp sword stabbing into the heart of a former friend. However, all of this was not enough to move Morax from his will to save the people of Liwe. During the Archon War, there was one Archon who was different from the rest, Havria, Archon of the Salt, was unable to put her reason down and join the battle for greed. Instead, she provided a, ho a home for those who became refugees as a result of the Archon War. She led her people to set up villages in what is now known as Saltere, meaning the salt within the well. From the world filled with despair, she brought her people love and comfort, and she always tried to find peace with other Archons. However, ironically, she died not at the hands of other Archons, but at the hands of one of her followers. This is the first and only mortal leader of Sautere. Like other followers, he was loyal to Havria. However, with the mind of a mortal, he was unable to understand the selfness love Havria has for her people. He believed that Havria was too weak to protect him and his clan, and thus with his long sword stabbing into the Archon's body, the Temple of Salt started to collapse. The rest of the clan seeked protection from Morax. Knowing what happened, Morax saved them. Maybe he already knew what story would become thousands of years later. Near the end of the Archon War, Morax was traveling amidst the mountains when he heard a quiet yet depressing sound coming from a crack within the ground he could not recognize. Liyue is native to very ancient geo creatures, but not most of them can see. Following the sound, Morax found a strange stone, who later became Azdaha, Lord of the V-Shabs. Morax brought him onto the surface, then carved out his eyes so he could see. The once blinded Geo Dragon then signed contract with Morax, so he can live amongst the humans on the surface as long as he does not harm them. After the long and hard battle, the Archon War finally came to an end with Morax emerging victorious to take the throne of the Geo Archon. 
peace finally came to Liyue. However, the fertile soil of Guili Plains has already been turned into the Dihua Marsh. Morax then invented the Mora. People of Liyue gradually transitioned into merchants and manufacturers. The best amongst these came together to form the alliance of the Liyue Qixing meaning the seven stars of Liyue. Each person's title is named after a star in the Big Dipper. The followers of Morax also came together to form the Minanus, using both the name of the Morax and Liyue, meaning a thousand rock. This was the formation of Liyue Harbor. Even though the Archon War was brought to an end, however, Liyue was not completely peaceful. The sea was guarded by ocean demons, and the mountain was occupied by the mountain dragon. And the energies left by other Archons scatters across the land. The ocean monster was later slaughtered by a foreign seaman. Morax came to slaughter the mountain dragon, sealing its consciousness, bones, body, and spirit separately. Finally, he summoned the five Yakshas to slaughter evil spirits, and Liwa was finally in peace for a while. With the Archon War coming to an end, the seven Archons who came victorious are given the responsibility to govern a nation. The Animal Archon Barbados from Mondstadt would normally come to visit Morax with a bottle of local wine. Morax first thought he needed help. However, after learning that Barbados came just to bring a bottle of wine as a gift, he find it funny, but accepted the gift. The other five Archons soon learned the news that not long, the seven would gather in Liwe and drink together. Under the directions of the seven, Tabat quickly recovered from the Archon War. Same for Liwe. Morax witnessed the come and go of the Chisin's members as well as the prosperity of Liwe. However, he forgot about one thing and that is corrosion. The memories of geo-creatures are not very long compared to their lifespan. Anything that remains after the eons are only the emotions that are very strong. Azdaha was a friend and ally of Morax, however with time and corrosion, he starts to forget the face of his old friend and his responsibility of guarding Liwe. Also at the time, the people of Liwe started to revisit the mining industry, Overmining caused the instability of the Leila, which sustains Azdaha and his group of V-Sheps. Azdaha and the V-Sheps suffer hugely as a result. On top of that, Azdaha has lost most of his memories as a result of corrosion. Out of rage, Azdaha attacked the Chasm, causing damage to the people, and this broke his contract with Morax. Morax fought with Azdaha in the Chasm. One cannot bear to kill a former friend, while the other still had a sliver of reason behind that rage. Eventually, Azdaha was able to remember Morax and Liwe, and eventually decided to be sealed away by Morax. Morax tried to give some geo energy to Azdaha to prevent further corrosion, however, it was all useless in the end. At this time, Morax realized that corrosion is a law of Tevat that cannot be broken or stopped, and he himself is going through the process as well. If one day, if he loses his memory, how will he continue to protect the people of Liwe? Morax started to think about stepping down from the position of the Geo Archon, however, it was not the right time for him yet. Time not only took away the memories of Azdaha, it also took away the reasonings of the Yakshas. The Yaksha's duty is to clear Liwe of the leftover Archon energies from the Archon War. However, they cannot stop themselves from being consumed by such energies. Out of the five original Yakshas, three died, one were missing, and countless other Yakshas died and left, leaving only Xiao to serve the duty. Even though Morax is left all by himself again, but given the prosperity of Liwe, he was still very pleased. Menonis at the time was much more powerful than the current Menonis. Not only can they guard ley lines, they can also go on campaigns alongside Morax and Adapti to fight demons and evil spirits to protect the peace of Liwe. However, at that time a catastrophe broke out from the abyss. Monsters of the abyss raged out of their nests. The Menelis was forced to escort the civilians to safe locations, leaving only behind a small portion to defend against the monsters. Most of them ran head on into the abyss after one last farewell wine with the Geo Archon, never to be seen again. 
one nameless Yaksha fought alongside the Moonless, but all of them was never able to leave the Abyss. After the catastrophe, the timeline has reached the current, as you all have experienced an orchestrated death of the Jewel Archon and the fake catastrophe of Osile. Liyue, the ancient city, finally reached its time to say goodbye to its founder. At this point, Rex Lapis has passed away, yet Zhang Li still travels the world of the mortals.